Hello students. Well, today we're going to be talking about secondary storage. Uh, it is really interesting to have secondary storage. In the past, it was kind of hard to have it handy. It was uh, really big, as you probably notice when we talk about, when we show you different storage devices. But nowadays, your secondary storage is as small as a thumb drive. So let's learn a lot or a few more things about secondary storage. Okay, so here is what we're gonna be talking about in regards to secondary storage. We're gonna first cover important characteristics, then we're gonna talk about the media, you know, that is considered secondary storage, then the capacity, how much can we store within our secondary storage, how fast can we access that, and what are the many things that I can do with secondary storage. So we're gonna start with important characteristics. So what is that makes secondary storage interesting? Okay, so here we go. First of all, it's indirectly accessed by the CPU, meaning that the CPU cannot go directly and read from the secondary storage. You know, it needs to have something in the middle, and I'll explain that in a minute. It's non-volatile, okay, meaning that it stays there, or at least that's what they want us to think. It's slower to access, and guess why it is so slower? It is slower because it's indirectly accessed by the CPU, not directly. And it also has a higher storage capacity than primary storage. As we learned before, primary storage is, for example, the RAM, you know, that is right by the CPU, and that is not really that big, because in order for us to make more, you know, to have more RAM is really expensive, right? So our computers rely on secondary storage. So it is accessed indirectly by the CPU because usually it's plugged in as a peripheral to our, to our computer most of the time. For example, a flash drive, you put it in the USB. There is other kind of drives that you, again, use the USB because the USB is very versatile, right? It allows you to plug in many things. But nevertheless, when you do that, it plugs into the bus of the computer and then it goes to the CPU. Therefore, it's slower because every time that it, the CPU wants to access or needs to access something all the way from external storage or save for that matter, it has to go through the bus all the way outside into the periphery and then get that done and then come back to the CPU. So it is definitely slower. Okay, um, it says in here that it's non-volatile. You know, it means that it doesn't go away. If you store something and the, the electricity goes off, no biggie, it's still there, right? Just like you have probably experienced with your flash drive, but you cannot always count on those things staying there and not going away. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Let's continue. So what kind of media make secondary storage? Well. I'm gonna give you some of this. Some of this you have seen probably in our tech of the day, like magnetic tape, okay? In our tech of the day, you probably also saw floppy disks, which are different, you know, are floppy. Then we have the hard drive, which is most of the times is internal, but we have internal and external hard drives. Still, secondary storage. We have optical media, which we have grown accustomed to, like CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays. And we have our best friend, the flash drive or memory card. Okay, so there is a wide variety of different media that we can use. And some of them are older, as you can see, and some of them are newer. And probably somewhere in there, somebody's inventing something as we speak, okay? Because that's the way technology goes. So we have many different things, and I am pretty sure that within your life, you have used at least a couple of those, right? And we have grown very much dependent on secondary storage. You know, we think, oh, if I have it saved in my flash drive, it's gonna stay like that. How is uh, my flash drive gonna get ruined, right? Many people say, well, it's in my hard drive, it's gonna be okay, you know, because even if electricity goes away, I still have, you know, without power, my information is in there. But sadly, that's not the case. Let's continue. So, Capacity, for example, and in here I'm gonna talk about specifically the hard drive, okay? This is the best solution, which is the most cost effective because it's faster and it's much, um, it still has a lot more storage 
than primary memory or ROM, right? Now, as some computers will allow you to have more than one hard drive. People tend to think that hard drives or all of these, as I mentioned, they are there to stay. But in reality, that is not the case. Uh, hard drives have moving parts. And uh, sometimes after many, you know, the hard drive is rotating and the, you know, the lecture, le the reading heads are, are around. So because of that movement, it's going to get to a point where the device is no longer going to perform the way that it was expected. And maybe, you know, like many businesses say, well, if my hard drive is getting kind of old, I'm going to back it up or I'm going to pass that information into another hard drive just to prevent information loss. However, I want to tell you a story. <clears throat> Years ago, you know, there was a Hurricane Katrina in the Gulf, you know. And when that happened, a lot of computers got damaged, a lot of them. And some of them didn't have backups. The, you know, whatever information was, was stored, or even if they had it, everything went underwater. You know, it went, it was terrible. So there is companies out there whose only function in life, which only goal is to retrieve information from damaged hard drives. They try to do that so that if anything happens to your hard drive, they are going to, to figure out a way to get that information back and give it to you. When Hurricane Katrina happened, many people lost their information. And uh, these companies, you know, they, they, were, they were working 24-7 because a lot of people needed help, you know, uh, with, with their computers. And they had to hire suicide counselors because people were so desperate because they didn't have their data that they just wanted to die. And you may think, like, it's, believe me, it was not World of Warcraft, hopefully, <laughs> you know, or any of that kind of data. It was actually data related to their businesses. You know, maybe a database <coughs> where they have, they had all the customers and all the people that owe them money and how much money they owed and the list of clients and, you know, and vendors and all that stuff. And all that stuff was gone, gone. So when somebody comes and wipes all that information out, it's devastating for a business. So secondary storage needs to be respected and you need to think if you ever work in the industry, you know, make sure that you always back up your stuff. The same goes if you're doing your homework, you know. Yes, you have secondary storage and maybe very reliable your, you know, your thumb drive, but if you don't back it up somewhere else, namely in the cloud or something like that, then, you know, things happen. So you have to always uh, do a little bit more. Don't be so trusting that your information is going to be there. Okay, let's continue. So how about the access speed? How fast can we access? Well, I am going to go from slower to faster. Floppy disk, way slower. When it first came out, it was magnificent, but nowadays it's super slow. CD-ROM, okay, not as slow. Then we have DVD, slightly faster. Then we have the flash drive, which is good. And then we have the hard drive. And last but not least, we have the solid state drive, okay? If you look at this, then you will realize that the price goes kind of hand in hand with those. You know, if it's um, more expensive, probably it's going to be faster access, right? So there's always the, the thinking, what do I want to do? Do I want to pay more? Do I want to pay less? How much? How fast do I need that information? Can I wait a couple seconds? Yes or no. But a couple of seconds, a hundred times in a day, adds up, right? So you have to think about it if you have to make a decision like that. Let's continue. So, solid state devices are really fast. That's where, those were the faster ones, as we noticed in the previous slide. They are super fast compared to the regular hard drive, the one with the moving parts. They are great for fast booting, which means that the computer can get the operating system from the drive into ROM really quick. Therefore, your computer starts really fast. But they are very expensive, okay? On the other hand, you know, we have other devices which are versatile devices. And we start with optical media, okay? This is really, uh, this is very common, right? The DVD or CD. First of all, we have the CD, which uh, we can have a lot of information put in there or 
we can even have videos, we can have music, you know, and the great thing now we can burn them themselves, ourselves, I'm sorry. Then we have the DVD or digital video disc or digital versatile disc. Actually, it was versatile and now the people say video, but in reality, it can be anything, okay? Now, those two use red laser light in order to read the information. And then along came the Blu-ray, okay? Now, the Blu-ray disc, this one uses the blue laser light to read, which makes it faster and better, okay? So with this, we have covered many different kinds of storage, okay? Yeah, it's awesome to have different kinds of storage media, but no amount of secondary storage is gonna make up if you do not back up or if you don't use them and if you don't care for your media. So take care of your data, okay? Because data is very important. It may contain your homework, okay? See you around.